Are you finding yourself lost in the development process? Do you want to increase the quality of your work? The reason why you feel connected to these questions could be because your workflow is completely out of whack. There are a lot of tools and automations out there to increase your productivity in the software development process. But if you don't have a decent workflow, this foundation, then you will be in this continuous loop of outputting inferior work. This video, I will be discussing the workflow framework I use on every single project at a much higher level to make it seem as if you are a 10x software engineer. This workflow framework is mainly geared towards the individual level. There's the team level and system level that I'll be getting into other videos in the future, hopefully soon. So let's get into it. Number one, read and understand the requirements and mock-ups of the future. It's so very important. This is where if you don't understand something that you can communicate to your leads or your, to your business analysts, so you can be on the right path because ultimately you don't want to be turn around when you get to developing this particular product. So number two. Now, number two, this is where you're gonna be researching and you know building out this solution. So this is where you're gonna break down fundamentals of what it takes to build this out. This is very vital because ultimately what you're doing in this particular step is making a plan and you execute on it. So let's get into number three. This is where you're gonna be creating your feature branch and building out this branch so that you know whenever you're building out your feature, you can track your changes. This is very important. Version control is very important because you might be checking out something existing and you want to keep track of that. We're gonna constantly commit those things and you know put that into the history of the repository, either on your local or on the remote repository. That's so very vital. And if you don't know Git by now, I feel sorry for you, son. All right. Four, this is where you're going to be getting into actually building out your feature. Pretty much this stuff is very self-explanatory. But as you're building out the feature, if questions do arise, you know, bring those up to the business analyst, bring it up with your dev lead, you know, get some clarification going. Because the worst thing you can possibly do in building something out is assume exactly that's the assumption that they're going for. Never make assumptions. There's no such thing as, you know, stupid questions. The only questions that are stupid are the ones that are not asked. All right. Number five, this is where you're going to be testing your feature and creating your test classes. It's very important to know that you should be hitting on these particular criteria, such as the positive test, the negative test, persona based test, volume test, and make sure that, you know, your, your particular solution can scale. So as you're creating your test class, you wouldn't be looking at your test coverage, but as you hit these particular criteria, test coverage would be essentially a side effect of all of this. And if you are hitting on these particular criteria, you will have decent te test coverage. So boom. Whoa. All right. Number six, this is where you're going to be submitting your pull requests and getting a review. This is either, you know, you're getting another peer looking at your particular code or getting another dev lead or lead developer or senior engineer looking at your particular code. You don't want to really stand on your particular eyes because, you know, two eyes are better than one. So let's get into number number seven. This is where you're going to be doing your deployments and stuff. So this is where you're going to be deploying to a system integrated environment for testing purposes. So, you know, this is going to be very important because this is going to be a prime example of you know seeing your code to another environment what happens when it goes from this dev environment that needs to go into the system integrated environment and further on this is where you're going to be capturing any post deployment steps or pre-deployment steps that need to be captured so that your particular functionality can work also this is where the test is going to be checking out your code to ultimately get finished with your work so let's go into the last step is oh oh dang god dang all right so this is you know number seven this is pretty much where you're going to be be done you know you pass qa testing testing is all done you are essentially finito done finish with this particular work so one thing i do want to you know take note of all of these things there are a couple of things i want to keep track of even without all the awesome tools and automations and stuff out there for software development and system development, I found that having a workflow, essentially a mental and physical map, you know, really improved my software development quality and just like my overall delivery. If we were to extract all these steps out, they pretty much will come into these particular six pillars, communicate, research, track build, review, and test. So that's pretty much the end of this video. I have three more videos in this whole software productivity series that I'm trying to do. So make sure you subscribe and like this channel so you can stay up to date on any of the awesome things that will be coming out. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.